Hello everybody and welcome back to another, well, this isn't a War Thunder video actually, this is an Armored Warfare video. How many of you were aware that Armored Warfare released on PS4 on Tuesday? No, I wasn't aware of it either until yesterday. Unfortunately for me, I had an appointment that I had to attend. Um, one of the reasons I haven't been around to do a video in the past few days is because I've been incredibly stressed and incredibly busy. I'm still stressed, make no mistake about that, but thankfully the stress dropped enough today for me to be able to do a video. And I figured, why not, I'll download it before I leave tomorrow, it'll, yesterday, it'll be downloaded, I'll come back, play some games. And I've already gotten to tier 4, with the T64, uh, the T72 and the Chieftain Mark II. So, I figured for this video I'd just do a very brief, and I mean very brief, overview of what I thought of the, uh, of the game so far. Of course, those of you who have played or heard of Armored Warfare before this, which I imagine will be the majority of my audience, um, will be all too aware of what the game's basic outline is. World of Tanks with modern tanks. Now, I did actually download World of Tanks on PS4 when it first came out, and the only reason I didn't continue playing it was because it's not quite the same. The game looks substantially different, the interface is substantially different, the hangar is substantially different, and I wasn't so much of a fan of that. Which is kind of odd to think about, really, when you think about it. I could have ended up being a World of Tanks YouTuber if it had been exactly the same as the PC version. But, nevertheless, I ended up being a War Thunder YouTuber, and I'm very proud of it. Though I figured Armored Warfare may actually separate the monotony of my content somewhat, if those of you decide, well, if enough of you decide that you want to still see footage of it after this video. Bear in mind, though, that though I may do the occasional video regardless, if I do decide to do, say, <clears throat> I don't know, um, reviews of certain tanks, I can't make thumbnails in the same way I can with War Thunder. With War Thunder, I can turn off the HUD, take a screenshot of said vehicle and use that for the thumbnail. I haven't figured out how to turn off the HUD yet, or how to move around the camera without rotating the turret. I don't even know if you can do that, I haven't really looked at the controls very much, um, aside from how to drive, shoot, all this, that and the other, change ammunition. So, let's begin with the graphics. It actually looks rather good. Um, the World of Tanks console port, for lack of a better word, actually ended up looking kind of more arcadey and less realistic than World of Tanks on PC. I don't know what sort of settings or what frames per second this game is running at, but I would hazard a guess it's probably somewhere between, somewhere around medium settings um, and about 30 frames per second. Now I'm not going to get into the whole 30 frames per second argument because that is one hell of a popcorn in the kettle kind of situation that I don't really want to get involved in. But um, either way, it looks rather good. It is worth mentioning, of course, that this is not a PS4 Pro that I'm playing on. So this is in 1080p, not 4K. And even if it was, I don't have a 4K TV, so that'd be kind of that'd be that kind of knackered, really. So what about game modes? Well, you have PVE, which is players versus AI, which is what this is. This is in my T72, although unfortunately I'm actually bottom tiered in this game. Um, which is fantastic, by the way, this tank. Oh, my God, War Thunder, please hurry up and add it. I want it so much. Um, yes. You have PvE, PvP, which is basically World of Tanks-style battles. Um, and then you have another mode, which I'm forgetting the name of. Uh, kind of like operations, where the objectives change. Um, you start on one map, you get... As many respawns as you need, of course, the more respawns you actually use, the more money you lose from repairing your tank and all this that and the other. Um, so it is in your best advantage to try and stay alive for as long as possible. You can call in bombers. <laughs> yes, bombers. Um, UAVs. And you can also capture basically a pillbox which has a javelin anti-tank guided missile inside of it. And I captured one in a match a while ago when I was grinding for this thing and actually managed to take out two tanks. It, it does it automatically. You select which bunker you would like to occupy after capturing the zone. It's 20 seconds to capture it. Um, and then you can pick a bunker on the map which is empty so it's not used by anybody. 
um, I put mine right next to a capture zone which the enemy team had just taken and I got two kills as a result <laughs> so it is really good especially at that tier where the javelins don't really the vehicles that I was fighting didn't have any sort of ERA plating or defense against such an ATGM you can upgrade your vehicles just like you can in World Tanks although as far as I'm aware I haven't come across a vehicle where you can change their main armament you can somewhat customize their armor um, on the T-72 for example when you first unlock it it comes with sort of armored plates on the sides kind of like what's on the T-62 uh, T-64 sorry in War Thunder although they're not folded out they're flat to the side of the tank um, the armor quote unquote upgrade of course it depends on your opinion that you can get replaces these with rubber skirts which is what I've done now the rubber skirts are obviously not as thick as the steel plates but they do stop HESH, HEAT and HE from penetrating the side of the tank and somewhat negate penetration from HESH and HEAT which is always a bonus because being a main battle tank all of the frontal armor all of the armor really is at the front so front towards enemy at all times something I've just learned there the hard way after getting hit in the side the AI in the PvE mode by the way is surprisingly uh, nowhere near as inept than I was expecting I thought that they would just spawn in drive to a set location stop and then fire at anything they have the opportunity to these AI don't if you're on your own they will encircle you and they will kill you you really do need to stick with your team if you're in a meet if you're in a main battle tank in your top tier you should be at the front pushing um, I was bottom tier in this game obviously so I sort of mainly I kept with the other main battle tanks but I was more of a playing a supporting role most of the time in the PvE modes you have to capture a zone and there are also side objectives that you can do on this map the side objectives is taking out SAM sites which is uh, surface to air missile sites you can ram these um, this was a bullshit shot by the way the shot went high, hit his upper front plate and bounced because I'm in a dip. If I'd been on level with him, it probably would have penetrated, but he gets taken out shortly after. Um, yeah, I keep losing my train of thought, don't I? I'm awful. Red, you're shit. Yes, mate, I know. But, hey, you wouldn't be here if you didn't enjoy my content. So, what can I do? Um, <laughs> the maps are quite varied. Um, and there are multiple different difficulties that you can have for PvE. I haven't played PvP at all yet, and there's a reason for that. You have to have a tier 4 vehicle, minimum, in order to play PvP, which is kind of good because PvE teaches you how to aggro your armor, it teaches you the sort of things you'll be fighting, where to shoot them from, etc, etc. And, well, that's about it really. The only issue being that I tried getting into a PvP game, because it does reward more, reward you with more credits and experience than PvE does. But after sitting in a queue for two or three minutes, I basically gave up and just thought, screw it, I'll go back to PvE for a bit, which is exactly what I'm doing. Um, I kind of like it. Of course, most of these players are all, well, they're all PS4 players. No, nobody else has ever played this game before up until two days ago. So I'm not expecting fantastic gameplay from my friends, from my allies, yet. Um, which is to be expected not much like my expectations within War Thunder where the game has been out 4 or 5 years at this point and I expect everybody to know what the hell they're doing but as I keep repeating as often as I can multiplayer online gaming the only problem with it is that other people play it with you so I get taken out but due to the fact that I have a module on my tank that allows me to respawn in a PvE mode I take full advantage of that now there is modules that you can fit to your tank much like with World of Tanks ones that give you bonus experience, bonus credits um, a repair kit, a medical kit for your crew and the, mo the item that allows you to spawn back in now this is only available in PvE which is good because if it was in well if it was available in PvP it would be a bit unfair to those people who don't have it but it's there it adds to the gameplay and it keeps you in the match longer. If you're a top tier tank and you get taken out because you are being too overzealous as far as pushing is concerned and you're not familiar with where the AI spawn from the last thing you want is to get taken out when you are the only main battle tank on your team you are top tier and the rest of your team has only got I don't know, light tanks, wheeled tank destroyers, that sort of thing. 
Another thing I'd like to mention is that the actual shells you fire, it goes a little bit further than just penetration. In World of Tanks, you do damage by firing, penetrating, and then you, there's basically an RNG dice roll to decide how much damage you do. In War Thunder, if you penetrate a tank and you hit it in the right spot, it's more or less to do with where you hit rather than if you penetrate or not. Um, if you penetrate in the right spot, you will take out all the crew components and destroy the tank in one shot, something that's not possible or very, very unlikely in Armored Warfare and World of Tanks. Here though, because of the different types of armor that tanks have, they have ERA, they have composite, they have steel armor, you have to know what sort of ammunition to fire at said vehicle before taking the shot. Because you will penetrate if you're firing Sabo at a lightly armored tank, but it will do next to no damage because the shell's just over penetrated. And it will tell you underneath the gun sight, over penetration or overmatch, um, hit but no pen, hit but the shell fragmentated, in other words you penetrated an area you couldn't you penetrated slightly and then the shell basically just broke up. Um, which I kind of like. It makes it a little harder than World of Tanks. You don't just press your 2 key, load the premium and penetrate everything that you can see. It's not as overly complicated as War Thunder when you think about it. But at the same time, it is something that you need to be aware of. I mean, I shouldn't have been firing Sabo at that Sheridan. But I did because it's what I had loaded. I can change... Um, my shells, and there is a commander skill, that's another thing I need to get on to, crew skill, but we'll come back to that. There is a commander skill that allows you to load or swap whatever you're loading faster, so that's a bonus. Crew skill is available on the commander who stays the same, but your crew varies from each tank, and you can get other commanders that are better in certain roles than others, for example, main battle tanks, light tanks, etc. I hope you guys enjoyed this very brief look at this game. Let me know if you want to see more down in the comments section below. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe for more and I will see you guys in the next Armored Warfare video. Cheers.